Hi, uh, in this video I want to show you the internal construction of this uh, wall clock and basically do some measurement on the on the coil and oscillators of the clock. Now in the previous video we have measured the power consumption of different type of clocks and we have seen that um, a new battery can last maybe between one year to three years. But we did the measurement from the external point. Now today we're going to look at the internal part. Okay, so the first thing that I want to mention is that the voltage of a new battery is approximately 1.5, 1.6 volts, as you can see on the multimeter there. But the old battery has a voltage of approximately 1 volt. No, I don't have proper connection, so that's why it jumps. So it's 1 volt. During the lifetime, when the battery voltage drops from 1.6 volts down to 1 volt, during the whole period, the clock actually keeps the time really accurately. So this means the, the mechanism that is used inside is very cleverly designed. That even though the voltage of the battery is dropping, still it, it keeps the, the time properly. So we are going to look at the internal construction and see how does it achieve this goal. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the internal mechanical structure of this. I have already opened it. So I've connected two wires across this coil and also two wires across the quartz oscillator. This is the coil, this is the magnetic circuit, and then we have the rotor which is located here. Underneath it there is a chip on the board and, uh, and the quartz oscillator, I will show you later. Now if you look at the mechanical structure, let me first show you the other side. So basically we have three shafts, one of them is for the second hand, this one rotates the second hand, this one rotates the minute hand, and the other one rotates the, the hour hand. So now let me show you below this. Okay, so as you can see here, this one, it's the one that rotates the hour hand, and it's connected to another gear. And after that, it connects to this one. This one is the one that rotates the minute hand. So there is a turn ratio of um, 4 between this lower one and this one, and turn ratio of 3 between the two. So totally we have a turn ratio of 12 between this one and the other one. So when the minute hand rotates 12 turns, the hour hand rotates one turn. So that is for that part and then here this one is the, the the shaft that rotates the second hand so we have a gear here so the turn ratio between this gear and this one is actually 15 divided by 2 and the turn ratio between these two is 8 so 8 multiply 15 divided by 2 gives us 60 so when this one and this gear rotate 60 turns the minute hand rotate one turn so when the second hand rotates 60 turns the minute hand rotates one turn all right okay so between these two there is a turn ratio of 10 between this one and this one and between these two there is a turn ratio of 8 and between these two there is a turn ratio of 6 so 6 multiply 8 multiply 10 gives us 480. So when this rotor rotates 480 turns, this one, the gear that rotates the second hand, rotates one full turn. So that one full turn is equivalent to one minute, which means this rotor rotates 480 turns per minute, or 8 turns per second. So this is basically the mechanical construction of the clock. Now if I connect the battery, we can see that this one will operate. So first let us look at the rotor separately. The rotor rotates the, like that. And now I have to connect the other parts. So then basically you can see that this one, which is the second hand, it's rotating very slowly and obviously everything else is rotating, but we cannot notice it because it's too slow. All right, now I'm going to measure the the voltage across the coil and also across the oscillator. 
Okay, so here is the summary of the turn ratios that I just discussed. These are the number of teeth, and then you divide them, you get the turn ratio. Now I connected the probe across the coil, and you can see that this is the waveform which we have. So let me I measure the frequency of this waveform. So I use the cursor and I move this one here. And the other one. So as you can see, the the time between the full cycle is 125 milliseconds, which is equivalent to 8 hertz. So every second we have of course eight of these cycles goes up and goes down and that basically creates eight turns for us. So each of these pulses will create a half a turn on the rotor. So every cycle will create one full turn. So we have eight of these per second, so eight turns per second. Now you can see the magnitude of voltage is approximately 1.6 volts, the, the voltage of the battery, the new battery. But if I change the battery with an old one, the one that has one volt, obviously the magnitude of voltage will drop to about one volt. So the magnitude there is around 1 volt. And now, if you look at closely, the rotor cannot rotate continuously. So you can see there that it just wobbles around. Okay, so I have connected the probe to across the oscillator. Now, in this case, I put the probe at 10x, because when you put it at 1x, it apparently disturbs the disturbs the signal, so the magnitude of signal drops a lot. But when I put it at 10x, then um, the magnitude actually increases, as you can see. Uh, so now I want to measure the frequency of this oscillation. Maybe I just move the cursor a little bit. So it shows approximately 32.6 kilohertz, but actually the, the actual frequency is 2 power 15, which is 32 I think 768 um, hertz. Now, okay, so the magnitude of voltage here we have uh, actually a the, the ratio is 10. So the magnitude of voltage is approximately 1 volt, 1 and maybe 1 and 2 volt, like something like that. One and a, where is it? Let me put the other. He has 1.2, 1.3 volts across the oscillator. But of course, you as you may as I mentioned, you have to measure it with 10x, uh, like a very large impedance. Otherwise, it will influence the measurement. All right. So this is regarding the measurement. Now, if I measure the the pulses across the other clock, we will notice that um, actually the pulses are not very frequent. Okay. So now I have connected the probe to the other clock. As you can see, the pulses are not very frequent here. Basically, if I measure the frequency, we can see that in this case, every one second, we have only one cycle, as we have seen in the previous video. Yeah, it's exactly one second. So during one second, basically, we have one positive pulse and one negative pulse. Each of them will rotate it half a turn, would rotate the rotor half a turn. So every cycle, the rotor will rotate one full turn. For the other clock, every cycle, every second, the rotor rotates eight turns. Okay, so let us look at this rotor. So as you can see, there is a little bit of magnet underneath it. And I can show you that this is magnet because it attra attracts the steel. Now this piece of uh, magnet is actually oriented um, one part, half part is North Pole and half part is South Pole. And it is going to in this position. So now if I zoom in a little bit, we can see that uh, this rotor actually it has, it locks into specific position. So if I deviate it a little bit, it goes back to the, to that position. Look at the blue dot. If I go the other side, it goes there. But if I apply too much force, then it moves to the next position, which is here. So this blue dot, it can stay either here or either at that position. So now when we apply one polarity pulse, basically 
that one moves this rotor half a turn and when we apply another polarity the opposite polarity it moves it another half a turn so obviously in total um, every cycle we have one one full turn so because we had eight cycle per second so per second this one rotates eight turns that was what we talked when we discussed about the turn ratio so now when the battery voltage is uh, 1.5 1.6 volts or basically above one volt then it when we send the pause it gets enough energy to move it actually up to this point and this goes basically to the next position but when the battery voltage drops to let's say one volt then this rotor will not get enough energy to actually cross this barrier so it, it just comes back so if the voltage is small it cannot accomplish the, the full turn full half turn okay so that's about the the rotor now let me I show you the electronic part behind it there's not much underneath it basically we have these are the connection to these are the connection to battery and here is a chip on board and this is the oscillator and that's it so this is the ports that are connected to the coil and these are four connectors to the, of the oscillator okay so that was all about the wall clock um, I put back these clocks together so now they are are functioning i can use them uh, it's already very late i shall go and sleep bye